Hi, this is Sherry at Smoky Mountain Maker, and today we're going to make this little snowman. I think he's just so cute, and he's so much fun to make, and I want to show you how to do that. But also, he's got a secret. Let me show you. Look at that. He lights up. So, if you would like to make this with me, let's go to the craft room, and let's get started. And I want to show you what our materials are going to be. Of course, you're going to have to have a canvas. And these are the 16 by 20 canvases. And as you can see, they've got the canvas on the side. They're stapled on the back. So they're wrapped all the way around. You need some water container with some water in it for rinsing your brushes. If you're going to do the lights, you need an ice pick or something sharp that you can poke through the canvas. You'll need some little tiny lights that you can poke through the holes that you've just poked in the canvas. You'll need paper towels. You'll need these for drying your brushes. You'll need brushes. Uh, you'll need about three or four. You could get by with probably these three right here. Um, a one inch flat, a number eight flat, and a number one liner. You can get by it with just that. Okay. But you'll also need either a large brush or one of these foam brushes. Let's see. I've got two or three choices here. This is the, the size I like for this particular canvas. So we're going to use that. Okay. And you'll need something for a palette. I like to use uh, foam plates, paper plates, something like that you can um, just toss them when you're done with them. Okay, so of course you'll need your paint. The three colors that I'm starting with are Bahama Blue, True Blue, and uh, Navy Blue. So this is what we're going to use for our base. So let's get the canvas back up here. And this is my pattern. You'll be able to get this pattern on the website, uh, SmokyMountainMaker.com. All right, so like I said, this is going to be kind of tight quarters, but I wanted you to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, and I've also got some graphite paper. Uh, that's not necessary. You can use it. I'll show you how to use it, but um, it's not absolutely necessary. I'm going to show you a couple ways to do the pattern. So, all right, we're going to put some water on our foam brush here get these towels. I'm going to put them over here beside on me so I can reach them. All right, so we're going to start with our darkest color in the bottom. So we're going to put a little bit on our wet brush. Now we wet it, but we also blotted it off so that it's not real wet. If you have too much water on there, your paint's going to stand on the top. So let me see if I can get this up here where you can see what I'm doing. We have to do a lot of moving around on this one just to make sure uh, that you can see the process. So just bear with me on this. So we're putting our dark on. And if it doesn't feel like it's flowing like you want it to, there we go. You can add just a touch, not much, just a touch of water to make it move a little better. Now I'm going to start with my third, my second color, my uh, medium blue, and we're going to be adding that. Now a lot of people will tell you to start from the top and go down, which you certainly can. Um, and the reason for that is so that you don't put your arm down in your painting. Okay, we're going to move this up this way a little bit. And we're going to get our third color. Now, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I've not been washing my brush out. I've just been adding the color and putting it and blending. Now, the thing to remember is go straight. If you're growing crooked, then your skyline looks funny. So keep going straight. Now, it might take you a couple of coats to get a good coverage, especially with colors that are more transparent. Reds and yellows are very transparent. 
We're moving on up. See, and I like that mixed color. I think that's pretty. Makes me happy. Keep moving up to the top. Like I said, keep your brush straight as possible. Now, if you like a little more color in there, like if you want more of this blue down here at the bottom, you just add a little bit. And while it's still wet, it'll blend in really good. So you do kind of want to be a little bit quick about this so that you can keep your colors blending. And I like even a little bit of dark up here. All righty. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to wipe the paint off my light box here. I get wild when I'm painting. Okay. Now, is on the sides, you want to put paint on your sides because it's going to be hanging on your wall. So, Come down through here and add some paint on your sides. And I usually uh, put down newspaper or something like that while I'm painting to keep my surface clean. I put down this freezer paper today because I uh, wanted y'all to be able to see. Okay, so what I'm doing is just, I apologize if I can't keep this up here where well, you can see, well, I'm working with a limited space. Okay. And we're just going to keep going around all these edges. Okay. And our last edge. Now, when we do our snowman, we'll paint white where the snowman is. But for right now, we're going to put blue all over and get a coat of color on there. Alrighty. So, here's a little bit of, I missed a little bit right here at the top. Um, Alright, so I've got a pattern. And we're going to lay that out. Now, these two bottom pieces go underneath of the two top pieces. Okay, hopefully, there we go. See how he's all starting to line up? And I've got these little hash marks to kind of help you figure out. Let's put it this way. There we go. So those little hash marks will help figure out where you're supposed to be. Now once you get it all lined up, then you can take your tape. I've just got some painter's tape here. And what we're going to do is tape it together. Alrighty, so he's pretty much all together. Let's see if I can tear that little edge off there. I'll just leave it. It's not really a problem. Okay, so I'm going to put this water over for just a second while I'm showing you this. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some more tape. And I'm putting it up here at the top. And you've got him all lined up where you want him. So put that up at the top. 
and fold it over. So I'll stuck to my freezer tape paper. There we go. All right. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And we're going to use graphite paper. Now this is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is to actually take your scissors and cut around your snowman. So you would cut him out all the way around these big edges. Come around here. You would want to cut right through here, up the nose, back through here, around his little earmuffs, and back around the body of it. So you can do it that way. That's another way to do it. So we're going to, we're going to use this way today. So you're going to take your graphite paper and I'm put it under your pattern. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. We're putting this under the pattern. We're going up to the top where the nose is. Make sure that he's under there. Okay. Now we're getting ready to paint our white. So I am only going to do the outlines because it's no use to doing the rest of it because it's just going to be painted over. So, I've got a pencil here, and I'm just going to go around my outline, go around the nose. Now, if you are comfortable with freehanding, then by all means, you can freehand this. Okay. Got our little earmuffs. This doesn't have to be perfect. It's not a photograph. It's a fun painting. Of a snowman. So have you ever seen any perfect snowman? We're going around our ear muffs. Now, all right, I'm going to lift this up. Okay, so you can see where we've started. All right, I'm going to move my paper down and we're going to continue. Like I said, I'm just doing the outlines because there's no need to do the rest of it yet. So we're going with our outlines. And we are actually going to paint all of this white. And that's going to, that white is going to give us a better base for our color, for our scarf, and things like that. Okay, now you've got to make sure that your paper is where your outlines are. I run out of paper out of the graphite paper down here at the bottom so my line stopped. So this is why you have that taped up there so that every time that you lift it up and put it down then you can um, have it in the same place. So we're going to move on around here and we're going to come back down over this. Alright, then let's pick this up. Oh, there we go. There's our our outline of our snowman. Now, we're not going to take the pattern off. What we're going to do is actually, we're going to fold it back out of the way. Okay? So our, it's still there, and when we're ready for it for our details, then we'll bring it back, and we'll bring it back down again. All right, so let's get some white paint. Now, with this white paint, you're probably going to need a couple of coats. Well, I know you're going to need a couple of coats. And it's better to do two or three light coats than one big heavy coat. A big heavy coat will crackle. So, let's put some white paint out here. You'll need quite a bit. All right, we're going to get our big brush that we just used. Wet it down a little bit. We're going to wet it, and then we're going to dry it. So you want it a little bit damp. You don't want it real damp. Now, if you've got a really thick paint, some paints are a little bit thicker than others. If you've got a really thick paint, then I know you can't see that white paint in there, um, but there it is. If you've got a really thick paint, you may want to add just a little bit more water so that it'll move. So we're going to start up here at the top. Now, see how I'm using that edge? So I'm just going to outline his nose with that edge. 
outline him over here. And this is really going to help your orange. Orange is very transparent. So it won't uh, do good on that blue. It take, it'll take several coats to cover it. So there's our nose. And see how thin that is? You can still see through that. So we will do a couple of coats. So here's our side. Then we're going to bring that in. I'm not too worried. The color that I'm going to use for the ear muffins, ear muffins. I did that the other day. I kept saying ear muffins. So for the ear muffs, are, it's going to be a darker color, so I'm not too worried about putting white there. So we're just going to go around that. So if you have a good brush, and these aren't real expensive brushes, um, but they do really good. There we go. See how we're getting that color in there? And we're keeping it so that we don't drag our hand through the paint. If you're right-handed, you're going to work from the left to the right, top to bottom. If you're left-handed, you're going to do the opposite. You're going to work from the right to the left, top to bottom. So just kind of keep that in mind. And that way you're not dragging your hand through your wet paint. around through this side. Just take your time. If your paint starts to drag on you, then it's drying. And if it's drying, the best thing to do is let it dry and then start again. There we go. The other thing that you can do if you have a spray bottle is you can spray a little bit of water on your palette to keep your paint wet. And you can also dunk your brush. Don't dunk your brush. I shouldn't have said dunk. That's not an appropriate word for this. You want to barely put your brush in that. See how I'm just barely touching that? So getting just a little bit of water in my brush. And I'm putting it back on my palette. And see how that's a looser, uh, thinner paint now? And so see how much better that flows? It's still thin, but like I said, we're going to do a couple of coats at least. Probably three to get this good and opaque. So we're going down here where the scarf is. And this doesn't have to be perfectly in those lines. After all, he's a snowman. So just remind yourself that, that he's going to be pretty. It doesn't matter if you miss and get outside the lines just a little bit. It's okay. I'm giving you permission to paint outside the lines today. Okay? So here we go. We're going to go down this side. And you can see how I'm just taking my time. Let's see if I can push that up a little bit more. Okay. Whoops. That's our pattern, but hopefully it'll be all right right there. Going all the way down to the bottom. And we're just filling it in. If you get too big in a hurry and your paint is too wet, it will splatter. So just kind of keep that in mind. You see how I stand that up on the edge if I want a straight line? And then I go back up the side of it. So that way I don't have to go quite to the edge. Kind of helps me stay where I need to be. Now we were talking about those edges, so we're going to do our white over here on the side. 
And this is exactly why I put down newspaper, because it keeps your surface from getting messed up. Got my paint on there just a little bit thick, but we're just going to smooth it back out. Now, if you were to dribble paint over here on this side, where it's already dry, if you'll immediately get a wet paper towel, then it'll come off. So let's get this bottom edge. Because we're working with acrylics. Now, oil paint is a whole different ball game, but acrylics, um, you, you've got a little bit of time. So if you get that before it dries, you can get it up. Okay, and let's see if we can take this back up. Looks like when our pattern fell, you can kind of mess my snowman up right here, but we're going to fix that. Okay, we're just going to go right around there, and we're going to make his head just a tiny bit bigger. Like I said, it's the snowman. All right, so I'm going to dry this real quick. You can use a heat gun, or you can use a hair dryer. So we're going to use our heat gun. The heat gun does get very, very hot, and even if you're using a hair dryer, you want to keep that moving. If you're using a matte paint, then it'll go from glossy to matte. And that's one way you can tell that it's dry without touching it. So this is a matte paint, and so it was easy to tell when it was dry. So we're going to go back, and we're going to do another coat of white. See how we're getting better coverage now? If you get too much on your brush, just pat it off on your plate, your palette, whatever you're using. Or you can even use your newspaper that you have down. Now, as you start getting your final coats on here, start going with your shape. So... This snowman head is going to be round. So I'm going to start making it round. And that just helps it emphasize the shape. So we're going in making him round. We're making curves. See how much better that's starting to look? We're moving on down. And this is our scarf area. So we're going to cross. And that's okay. Here we go. So I'm going to probably end up doing three coats on this guy. All right, and then here's our body. I'll move him up there again. Alrighty. I know I don't do a lot of talking because I'm concentrating. And if you want to speed this up, I believe that there is a place on YouTube where you can actually speed the video up. So you can speed it up through the parts that you don't need to uh, watch 
in such great detail and then you can slow it down when there's more detail needed. Let's see how, how much better he's starting to look. We're going to dry this coat and we're going to put one more coat on. I think one more coat will hopefully do it. So we're going to get our heat gun again. Alrighty. So we're going to do another coat. Now you can let this air dry if you want to. I just like to keep moving. Remember, if it's not good and dry, you're going to get drag. See how much better he's covered. Okay, see how much better that looks. Let me put just a little more right through there. looking pretty good. All right, we're going to get his scarf again. Even though I'm not too worried about the scarf because we're going to be painting color over it. Like, see, I went outside that line just a little bit. So I'm just going to make it work for me. Bring it on in so that it joins. And we're going to get the body down here. Need a little bit more paint, so let's get that. I'm right, gonna move him up again so that you can hopefully see what I'm doing. Try to get him good and white. Now if you didn't want to do your whole background, you could have left this white and painted your blue from side to side, but that's a little bit harder to get a pretty background. So this was the, in my opinion, this was the better way to do it. Okay, I'm just going to try to, I'm going to put just a slight, again, just barely touching that water. And I'm going to go over this just a little bit, kind of smooth out some of those brush strokes. Just barely touching, and we're smoothing out some of those brush strokes. A little bit. He's wanting to drag. Just a little. There we go. See how much better that looks? 
Isn't that look good? There we go. Now, all right. I think he looks pretty good. Now I'm going to dry it one more time, but first, always take care of your brushes. So we're going to wash our brush out. Now we're going to do a fair job here. We'll wash them out really good later before we put them away. Don't leave your brushes laying in the water. That's not good for them. That will uh, allow the glue to come loose and the wood will come away from the barrel. So just a little bit about brush anatomy. Here's your bristles. This is your ferrule and then your wooden handle. So if you leave that brush in that water, then that water will seep up through here, get into your ferrule, wet your brush stem handle, and then that'll break loose. So always take care of your tools. You'll probably hear that a lot from me, but that was something that was taught to me by my parents. And uh, so that's something that I try to do. Now we're going to dry one more time on this white. Okay, he's dry. I'm going to put my water back over here out of the way. Okay, now where we had our pattern tape, see how that's going to come right back down over your snowman. So that's why you want to make sure he's dry. I did down there. Okay, now we're going to take our pencil again and put our graphite paper under here. Try not to rub too hard or your graphite will go over on your white. But if you do that, it will just take and we'll um, paint it with another coat of white just to make it look better. So there's his nose. And you can pick it up and see it outlined. Now this is what I'm talking about. See this graphite right here? But we're going to take our white once we're done and we'll go over that and it'll look fine. Here's his mouth. And again, if you feel comfortable freehanding this, by all means, go ahead and do that. Now the other option that I had the ladies group do is they actually cut their pieces apart. So when they were ready for the nose, they just laid the nose down at the top and then just traced around it. So that's another way to do this if you don't have graphite paper. Now I don't have my paper all the way down. See, I forgot to move my paper. And also, for some reason, this half of his mouth didn't show up very good. So I'm putting my paper and my graphite back and see how that keeps everything lined up. And we're going back and we're going to press just a little bit harder. We're using black over this, so that's not going to be a problem. Okay. You can use a pencil or an ink pen or stylus to do this. Again, these things don't have to be perfect. And if you're not sure that you got that, just lift it up. Look at it. Make sure you got all your lines. See, all of our lines are there. Okay, I'm going to move this on down. I'm going to lay it this way so I get this piece of the scarf. Okay, I'm going to bring it over here and do my pieces of coal. And 
and slide it on over here and get the other piece of the scarf. And just take your time. It's a little bit lumpy over that wood. There we go. Okay. All right, there's all of our pattern on there. So we're going to fold this back again, just in case that we need it. I'm actually going to put it underneath this time. So it's underneath my board there. All right. So there you can see our little snowman. Now, we know the nose is going to be orange, so we need to get us some orange out. Shake your paint up. This paint here is really thick. So what I'm going to do, let's get the nose down here where you can see it. All right, put a little bit of water on your brush. Just to touch it, touch your brush a little bit. Get your water. Blot it off a little bit. Don't want to go into your paint with a dry brush. Now, I'm getting a little bit more water because I want to, this is really thick and I want to thin it down just a little bit. And we're going to put two or three coats of this orange on here too. It'll take that much to cover. So just run down your sides. Hey, that brush that we were just using, that bigger brush, you can use it to start with. Kind of like it whenever I'm doing edges like this. So just stand it up and pull it. See how we're just pulling it down. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Make sure you don't drag your hand in that. You can put your little finger, you can put that down on your canvas and use that to steady your hand. Now remember, carrots aren't perfectly straight. So if this is crooked, don't worry about it. Okay. So now we're going to go across. Now, carrots are round. So we're going at a, a curve. We're making a curve. And that mimics, that helps visualize that round shape when you do that curve like that. And again, just take your time. And make sure when he's down here at the bottom, see you've got the curve already in your pattern. That helps with the dimension a little bit. So we're going to let that dry, then we're going to go back and put a couple more coats on, just like we did our white. So I'm not going to use my dryer, I'm going to move on to another place. We're going to start on the scarf. So we'll move this up. Okay, now you got to figure out what color you want for the bottom of your scarf. And I really like this little Bahama blue color. So that's what I'm going to put for my base. And you don't have to be careful going around this because that's uh, going to be easy enough to do. Now, if you're not comfortable, like, you can kind of see your lines when you're on this side and go around them, but it's hard to see because your hand's in the way over here. Now, something to remember 
yeah, this thing ain't stuck. So all you have to do is pick up your your uh, canvas and actually turn it around. So if that makes it easier for you to paint, then pick that sucker up and turn him right around there where you can get to it. And we're going to go like circles with this one because that's the knot of the scarf. So we're kind of making circles. Okay, see? Now, let's smooth this out just a little bit. All right, and we get just a little bit of water. Go back into our paint, and we're going to go down the sides here. Let me move this palette. Just because you have a big brush doesn't mean you can't make smaller lines with it. And then we're going to go up our edge, like we talked before, this bottom edge. We're keeping our colors going the same. Because this is going to be hanging on the wall, so we want it to look right. Okay, here we go. All right, let's go over here and get this other side. We're dragging our brush. Dragging our brush. That gives us our outline. Then we're going to fill it in. The longer strokes you can make once you get started there is better because you're not going to have as many brush marks. But I don't really mind the brush marks. I think they give it character. And they show that it's an actual painting. It's not a photograph of a snowman. So There we go. Okay. Now, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to see if my orange is dry yet. Nope, still tacky. All right. So I'm going to take and wash my brush out. And you have to decide what color you want for your earmuffs. So I think on this one, I'm going to use Cardinal Red. I think that's going to be pretty. So shake up our paint here. Now, red, again, is transparent, so it's going to take two or three coats. There we go. We're going to do this side first. Very carefully. Outline it. Turn your brush as you go around. If you're comfortable with that. If you're not, just touch it to the edge and stroke it across. Touch it to the edge and stroke it across. I'm going to do that over here. I don't know that you can see me. Now we're going to go around these with black. So if that's not perfectly even, it's not going to be a problem. Now this big brush is a little bit harder to get around that curve doing this way. So we're going to drag it. Okay. Let 
Alrighty. And if you're not happy with that edge, all you've got to do is get you your little brush, get some paint on it, and just touch it up. And just go right through there and touch him up. See how that just fixes that edge for you? Around. There we go. See how that does? Okay. Now, we're going to do the other one. So we'll do this with this little brush. So we'll just go around our edge with a little brush. Remember, you can turn this around so that it's closer to you. Okay. And then you can switch brushes and fill in the inside. So don't feel like that there's only one way to do something. If you're not comfortable with this great big brush, then go to that size and fill it in. Okay. All right, so we're gonna wash this red out. Now if you're OCD, because these two aren't the same size, then just go back in, bring it down a little bit. But again, remember this is just a more like a cartoon than a portrait. It's not a portrait. It's supposed to be fun. So they're a little bit closer to size. All right. And then wash your brushes out. Okay. Now I'm going to see if my orange is dry yet. Yep. It's pretty good. Well, it might be a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, right there it was. Okay, so I'm just going to hit it just a little bit with this. And also, I'm going to get the, my scarf because I don't want to drag and mess it up. So we're going to go back with our orange. A little bit of water on your brush. And get some paint on there. If you'll notice, I don't get paint pl plumb up here to the ferrule if I can help it. You don't want paint up that far. You just want it on your bristles about halfway up. We're going to put another coat on here. And remember your shape. Let's pull it back down here where you can see it better. Now, I've got a little bit of wide out here, so I'm just going to cover that up. I'm going to make his nose just a little bit bigger. Not going to hurt a thing. There we go. We're going to keep putting our orange on here. See how transparent that is? Orange and yellow and reds are very transparent. But now a little bit of yellow goes a long way as far as making a statement on a piece. So just something to remember if you're uh, decorating or painting or any of the crafts that you might be doing, a little bit of yellow makes a huge statement. It's such a vibrant color. 
takes a lot of uh, the attention. See how adding that in like that and curving it makes that look more like a carrot than just an orange triangle. And remember, we're going to go around this with black too. So I'm just going to let that dry again. I kind of like that texture look. Washing our brush out. And get this brush here, this is the number 12 flat. And I'm going to put another coat of red on here. And the second coats are always a little bit easier to do. Just kind of stay inside those lines that you already have made. rinse the red out. I'm going to do another coat on the blue. Move this back up for you. Okay. And getting our blue on here. Now if you like that look, you can just go with that. If you don't mind the the variations in color because it's a scarf it's not that big a deal scarfs usually have some texture If you see your little graphite line, now like I said, we're going to put uh, black on this. But if you're not going to, you can cover it up. See how that just covered that up? There we go. Okay, and again, as usual, wash your brush out. down here. Now, another paper towel. See where that graphite was? That's wiping it up some. Cleaning it up a little bit. See, it even wipes off my little smile if I, I get it close to that. But I'm just doing this to show you that um, after you get done and it gets completely dry, then you can take a paper towel and I believe you can get that graphite off of there like that. So you don't have to worry about trying to, to um, touch it up. Okay, I want to put this little smile back on there. We're going to get our little brush or I'll show you how we'll just use this one. Okay. And I'm going to get some black out. It'll come out. Again, that's thick. Folk art is one of the thicker paints you can use. So we're going to need a little bit of water to thin this down. We don't want it inky, but we want it a little bit 
more than ink. Okay, so here was our little dimple. And here's our smile. I'm going to go back this way. Meet there. All right. Okay. Now, wash my brush again. I'm not going to do the rest of my outlines quite yet, but I want you to notice about a third of the way down is his nose, about another third is his mouth, and then you've got another third here to the bottom of his chin here. So if you put your mouth way down here, he's not going to look right. It's got to be up here like his head is tilted to the sky. So that's why we don't have any eyes up there. Alrighty, so now let's see what we've got going on. That's still a little bit wet, so we're going to have to get our hair, I mean, our heat gun out. I'm going to do one more coat on this carrot. And bring it back down here again. I need a little bit more paint. I'm going to thin this down a little bit so it'll flow better. Again, that's that uh, Colcott brand. And a lot of their, not all of their colors, but a lot of their colors are really thick. So you just thin it down with a little bit of water. And brush it down. A little bit more water. If you've got too much paint on your brush, then just put it on, pat it on the side, and get it down a little bit. And I've got my little finger down, steady in this hand, so that I can move. I hope you can see that. So I'm trying to hold it sideways. I don't know if this will work or not, but we'll see. So, I don't think it's going to. It's not going to work. Because what I do is put my finger down as I'm stroking that. So, that kind of helps keep you steady. So, hope you, hopefully you can get the ideal. And what I would do is practice. Get you something, uh, the newspaper, whatever, a magazine, anything like that, that you can just practice on you can just throw away later and you can practice your techniques All right now I went outside the line just a little bit right here so I just wash my brush off and I'm just going to take it right through there and smooth that back down. See how that went? Because my paint under here is dry, I can rub that little spot off. So you just take your little brush and just grab him off a little bit. See? Wow, well, that's done. Okay. Let's so our brush out again. Put him over here. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is um, our little scarf. Now, you got to decide what colors you want on your scarf. And you can do um, a couple of different colors if you want to, like in our example. You could do polka dots if you want to. I think polka dots would be really cute. Um, I'm going to do one with polka dots because I'm just interested in how that's going to 
do it. I think it'd be really fun. So, all right, I'm going to use yellow. Get my yellow paint over here. I think I've got one that's open. Okay. Now, I know that right here is my knot. Now, if you can't tell that, you can always put your pattern back over and mark your marks. But I'm, I'm, with the stripes, what we're going to do is we're going to try to keep our um, shape curved just a little bit. Now, you can do solid stripes if you want to, but I kind of like the little just uh, dragging a stripe in there. I just thought it was a fun look. So we're going to do a stripe here, and I'm going to do a little stripe over here. That's not quite enough paint, so stripe and a stripe right there. Now, I kind of like that look. You may not. If you don't like it, make it solid. Go to, always to the edge. And then I'm going to have a little stripe right here. And see how I've curved that? So that gives the illusion of the material being curved. Okay. So we're going to do the same way down here. And let me move this down so you can see. Now we're doing. Now I'm leaving space in here, well I'm trying to, for my yellow. So we're going to see how that looks. And I like to play with things. Now, if you get this on here and you don't like it, wipe it off very carefully. And then take and, um, with your paint, just paint over it. So paint back over your green and then start again. Okay. So I'm going to wash this brush. And we're going to go to our yellow. Rinse it out good. Okay. And then we're going to do our yellow stripe. We're doing the same way. Now, I didn't hardly give myself enough room on this side, so I'm going to rinse this brush out and get me a little bit smaller brush. So we're going to go with this other side. So we're going to go with this one. And we're going to put our stripes in there. Now, I dragged that into red just a little bit, so I'm going to wash it out to keep it clean. And then I'm going to go back up here and put in a yellow, and I want a yellow one over there, but then I want another red one over here. So I'm going to put a red one on this side, and I think that I really don't want that curved right there. So I'm going to take my paper towel that's wet, and we're just going to take really carefully, and we're going to wipe that one off. I don't like the way it looks. So we're just doing real careful. A little bit of water. And watch where you're going with it so you don't get into your red one. See how we're just wiping that off. Okay. Now you can see I've dragged a little bit of the red right there. So we're going to take our brush with some water on it. And we're going to work that off. We're just trying to clean this up a little bit. Okay. A little bit of water. And we're just moving that away. See? I'm cleaning this off right here. Where it drug down. 
everybody makes mistakes. But you just fix them. Okay. So now I want a red stripe over here. And then I want my yellow stripe to be more of an oval. Like that. Okay. Alrighty. Now I'm happy. And if you wanted to go around that and do polka dots, polka dots would be really cute. And if you want your stripes more solid. I just wanted mine to look a little bit more um, whimsical. So we're just going to leave them like that. Alrighty. Now, the next step we're going to do, I'm going to come back down to the top. Our carrot's looking pretty good. He's uh, just about dry. I'm just going to hit it with the heat gun. All right, be careful of your scarf. If you're afraid that you're going to touch it because it's not quite dry yet, then you can blow it off and get it hot, uh, dry while you're doing the carrot. So I need some black is what I'm looking for. But I also want my orange too, so I'm going to get both my little palettes here. So I'm going to wet my brush just a little bit. I'm going to get just a touch of black, and I'm going to put it over here with my orange because I don't want it really, really black. I just want to... Um, a little bit lighter color so we're mixing it with the orange because we're going to put it on our carrot so you know when you have a carrot and you have those little dark places before you peel it those little indentions so that's what we're doing here so we're just taking the, our brush and we're just going to make some indentions okay and you should keep these curved too I didn't curve that one well enough so we're just going to take a little bit of water and take that off and see where we dried that it's you can take it off without taking that bottom layer off so that's better okay there we go I want it quite that curved so we're just going to daub that right there there we go I want a little bit right here I'd like to have just a little right there all right, now when, your, when you're happy with the way that looks, then rinse your brush out again. Now, we're going to highlight these a little bit. So we're going to take our red, and we're going to add just a little bit of white. So get your white, a little white over here, a little red over here, and we're going to get a lighter color. Okay. So what we're going to do with this color is we're going to make little parentheses. So you're going to make a parenthesis here and here, here and here. See how that makes it look like it's more dimensional. So that's what we're going to do with that. Now, we're going to go back and wash our brush out again. These little details is really what makes it cute. Okay, I want to dry my carrot. Okay, I dried everything while I got it. So, now, right here, I got my yellow over on my white a little bit. And I don't want, I don't want that. So, I'm just going to take my brush, get a little bit of my white paint, and I'm just going to fix that. Because it's already dry, so there's no way that I can wipe it off. So, we're just going to cover it up. See there? Take care of that. And we're just blending it. Okay. There we go. So if you're having places like that, then you can fix them. So just carefully touch them up. Okay. Now, let's see. I want to get back to where the carrot is. Now we're going to take this brush with a little bit of white, but we don't want a whole lot. So we're going to we're going to take it and get it pretty dry. So it's going to be it's not got very much paint on it, and we're going to Put our little finger down and stroke it. Now that's still a little bit more than what I want, so I'm just going to rub it. And I'm still not happy with that. 
And this is the advantage of drying stuff. So if it's dry, you don't lose your underneath. So we're just going to wipe it off. Still was too white for my liking. All we're wanting to do here is just highlight that a little bit. Okay. Alrighty. So we're going to take our, our white. There. Now that looks better. All we wanted was just a little bit of highlight. And like I said, if you're not happy with it, just get your other color. Go back in there and drag it across. There's not too much you can fix. Sometimes you may have to go back and start all over on a particular place. But that gives it a little more dimension. Okay. So now I'm going to wash my brush again. If you're changing colors, always be washing that brush out. And I want to kind of take a little bit of white. And I just want just a little bit. So I'm going to dab it off on this paper. Let's see what we got here. And I'm just going to go and kind of touch this a little bit. Kind of just highlight it just a little. I don't want too much in there. Now if you don't like that step, you don't have to do it. And again, if you feel like it's too bright, then just go back in with a little bit of water and tone it down. So as long as you've got that lower layer dried, then you can play with it just a little bit. So that's really key. Make sure that lower layer is dried. I think that I like that better. Okay. Now, if you're not sure about where this mark is going to go, then you need to dry this again. And what we're going to do, put our pattern back over. That's why we had to make sure it was dry. Get our pencil back and our graphite paper. We'll pull this back down here. And we're going to draw our little headband here. See how simple that is? That's why you keep your pattern tape. Alright, I'm going to put it back underneath. Alright, now we're going to our black paint. And a little bit of water to thin it down a little bit. Put the water back over here where I can reach it. Okay, so just a little, just a touch of water. And you're going to go, and you're going to copy that. Now you can do that with this, or you can do it with that uh, big brush and using the edge on it. So whichever one you're comfortable with. And again, you can turn your paint, painting around. You don't have to keep it up like this. As you can see, I'm doing just a little bit of water to thin this paint down so that I can pull it. I'm just going to make that a little bit thicker to match it. What I have there, I'm going to do the same thing over here. And 
and just take your time. It's hard to see that line when your hand's covering it. Okay, now, so we're going to continue with our black. And we're going to put it on our carrot. Tape stuck, there we go. Alright, so we're going to start on this side so we're not dragging across. Be careful of this. If you're not comfortable doing it like this, then use your dryer and dry it. A little bit of water. Ooh, I'm glad I drop, didn't drop that on my painting. Okay. A little water. Pull it up. Then we're going to come back down on this side. That's got a little bit of curve in it, but that's okay. It's a because it's a carrot. There we go. And we're going to go under here. Yeah, looking cuter all the time, isn't he? Okay. We're going to go up here and do our muff and our ear muffs. And sometimes you have to spin your brush as you're painting. You just turn it a little bit as you're going around those curves. And that's why it helps it drag. So if you're not comfortable with that, again, go back to practice on your newspaper. And just take your time. Make sure your paint is thin enough to flow and go around. You don't have to do these things, but I think that makes it cute to put the little bit of black around the edges. Really makes them stand out. Isn't that cute? Okay, so there we've got that. We're going to move on down to our scarf. Now with the scarf, I like it just a little bit more whimsical. So I'm just doing my circle around. I'm not even worried about that it's on the edges. I really don't even want it quite on the edges because I want it to be fun. I want to kind of show the strokes on this. So again, make sure that your paint's flowing. Add water as needed. I just want it to have a really fun look. And that's what makes this guy so easy. It's because we're not stressing over every little detail being perfect. The imperfections is what makes him cute. See there? Isn't that cute? Now we're going to go in here and do our pieces of coal. And again, coal is lumpy. So don't worry if it's not real smooth. And don't worry if it's not real round either because coal chunks aren't round. When we were kids, a lot of people burned coal in this area. So 
That's what we had. Keep us warm. Okay. Now, I'm going to hit this again with the heat gun. Dry it off really good. Make sure you have him good and dry. If that black smudges, you do have a mask on your hands. So it's a little bit harder to fix. Okay, I need a little bit more fly. All right, so I've got a couple places that need just touching up a little bit. So we're going to fix these little places here. That's all we're doing with this for a second. And these are kind of where that stuff um, graphite was. And again, if you want to, you can just take a little bit of water and rub that graphite off. See how that's coming off? Okay, so I've got a couple of places I got a little bit of uh, yellow sprinkled right there. So I want to get rid of that. Okay, and I want this just a little bit right here so you can touch things up if you didn't like the way exactly like it did just kind of be careful and touch it up a little bit but again as I said before this one he's for fun and that's what we want to have I, w I don't want you stressing out over him all right so we got that now I'm going to show you what to do like if you had there's a little bit of yellow I'm not really worried about that what I would normally do is just put a snowflake right there but if you had a space that you couldn't fix, like I've got this little place right here. Let's go. Let me push this where you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So we're going to go back and we're going to get our first colors. Wash our brush out good. All right. Now I know I had a little bit of this blue down here. So we're going to pick up a little bit of that and we're going to stroke it in. And what we're going to do is start blending. We get a little bit of this blue, and we're going to blend it. The only problem you're running into is this when you get over to this. You've got to be careful. So bring it on across. I should have got the bigger brush. Let me get that bigger brush. It's going to blend better with it. Okay, a little bit of water on it. I don't want too much of that light blue right there. Let's get some more of this color. Okay, be really careful right there. I'm just going to cover it up. Keep blending it up and blending it down. So when you have something like this, you can just kind of fix it up. I just wanted you to see what we're doing. So I want a little bit of that color right there in it. I'm going to work that down. Gonna work it up on this side. Paying attention to where our edges are. And then if you don't want it that streaked, which I kind of think that's pretty myself, um, but if you don't want it that streaked, you just keep blending. Keep blending. There we go. A little white right there need to be covered up. Okay, see, don't even know that, that was a place there. So what we're doing is just blending it. The more you brush across it, the more it's going to be blended. And I like that. Okay. Now, if you wanted more color up in here, you wanted more of this blue, then just stick you some up there. I think I like him. I like that blue 
and I'd like to see a little bit more. So just keep blending. And so nothing set in stone when you're painting. And we're even going to use our knife edge. The sharp, the long sharp edge, this right here, is also called the knife edge. So we're going to use our knife edge. And we're going to mix a little bit more of this in here because I really wanted more of that color in that. So if you get done and you're not happy, there are ways to fix it. There we go. The main thing is make sure you're keeping straight across your canvas. Now, it's pretty like that. I leave a plate down there. There's a place. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to hit it again with our dryer. And as I said before, you can uh, let all this stuff air dry if you want to, but if you're like me and you like to get your project done, then use your dryer. I want a little bit more white right here. And then we're going to fix these little cold pieces. We want to highlight them a little bit. So we're going to take our white and we're going to put just a little bit of that in there. And that kind of, and I'm just kind of making it rugged because cold pieces are rough. So that's what we're going to do for that. Now we're getting to the fun part. We're going to put our snowflakes on there. So we're going to wash our brush out again. Now you might want to practice these on some paper and get the feel of what, what we're doing. Okay, so we're going to use, again, you can use your small brush. I think mine slid under here. Um, where did he go? Playing hide and seek. He's rolled under something. There he is. Okay. Now, you can use this small brush, or you can use one like this, either one of these. And you probably will want to use both of them. So let me show you what we're going to do. So we've got our white paint here, and we're thinning it down some. So you need some water, thinning it down so that it's a little more like ink so that you can drag it. Now, I'm going to roll it a little bit on the side of my plate get some of that off All right so this is where you're going to be using the your little finger to help steady so what you're going to do and you can get you a, a clean paper towel with some water on it in case you don't like it so you can wipe it off really quick so start it again I don't want that to dry on me so what you're going to do is put your little finger down and you're going to just drag Now that's not hardly uh, wet enough see how it's not solid so we're going to drag it. I get a little more water. I want this a little bit thinner. Drag them. Drag them. Now you can do them just like that. And those are really cute. Or we're going to add a little bit more to it. So we're going to take our knife edge on our brush and make sure that it's good and straight. And just a teeny bit of water. And bounce it into your paint. See how I have just a little bit on there. All right. Then, let me see if I can get this over here where you can see good. We're going to go and we're putting little lines like that. Then we're going back here and we're putting more little lines. Okay. So, and we're just bouncing those on the canvas on our snowflakes. I'm going to just continue doing that. Now if you want it just a little bit longer, then take your knife edge, get right in that groove that you already had, and pull them out. See how that's making it bigger? Just pull it out. 
I actually prefer the knife edge over the the small brush. I think it's a better look. So just use your knife edge. Put your little finger down. Drag it out. Drag it out. And you just have to be careful that you don't do what I did right there. I put my finger down in the paint that I had there already. So we're just going to see if we can't wipe that off a little bit. I'm going to go on back here a little. There we go. Okay. It's our little paint. And be careful. Don't do what I just did. And drag it down. Alright. And then we're going to go back. Now, I'm not going to have a bunch of these big ones. I just have a few. These special ones. And I'm going to do some different ones just for fun and show you how they're done. And if you like them, you can do them. But if you don't, you don't have to put them in there. Just whatever you like. Actually, my favorite is these right here. Okay. All right. Let's put a couple of these on here. That's all. Now, isn't that cute? Now, I'm going to do one that's kind of like a flower. So I am going to use my round brush for it. So we're going to get our paint on there. All right. Now, let's see. Make sure you can see it. So we're going to start and we're going to curve it like that. See, we're just making little petals. Put another one over here. And a couple more. So you have that one. Okay. And we're going to do some of the simple ones again. So we're getting our white on our brush. We're going to use our straight edge. And we're going to touch and drag, touch and drag, touch and drag, touch and drag. We're going to do a little one here. I don't want a real big one. And then another one over here. Okay. So I think I need one right there. Okay. So now, um, I might want just a little bit of, uh, I think I'd like to have another one similar to that, just a t uh, kind of mimic it. So we're going to go over here to this side, and um, we're going to do a little bit of that. Again, we're just touching it with our edge of our brush. And our brush has got a little bit of curl in it, so you can see we're getting a little bit of curl on that. But that's okay for snowflakes. And I think for this one uh, right here, I think I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. And I'm going to do the same thing for it. And hopefully you can see what I'm doing. We're just taking our brush and hitting it down through there. Alrighty. I think that needs one more right here. Alright, so now I think that looks better. Now the next thing that we're going to do is brush your, wash your brush out. Always remember that. We're going to get the bottom of our brush and we're going to dot, dot it in our paint and we're just going to put little snowflakes all over. And you might, you want it maybe one or two on his nose. Okay, and we're just bouncing them. And these are your little snowflakes. We're going all over. We'll put a few 
around. Now be random with this. Don't be um, lines. Don't do lines. Be random. And I know it's hard to be random. But jump around. I have one or two on his earmuffs. So this is what brings the picture together. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Okay. So I'm going to hit it one more time with the dryer. Alright, so we're going to put this away. Take our pattern off the back now. Okay. Put this over here. Got our lights. Now I've already got my battery in here. So there's our little lights. And I'm going to show you how to put these in here. You have to have sticky, sticky tape. So we're going to use duct tape. Let me get that. So we need our scissors, our duct tape, and our ice pick. Now, I know that I'm going to put holes through the middles of these. So we're just going to punch through the middle. Be careful, you can tear your canvas. So as you're doing this, be careful. And I wouldn't let a kid do this. I do it myself. If you're, if you're painting this with a child, don't let them poke the holes. That needs to be done by an adult. Okay. Now I'm going to poke some more other random holes, but I just wanted to show you um, what we're going to do. So we're going to find our end, and what we're going to do is stick that end through here. Now you want to start on one side and work around to the other. So we're going to take that, pull our tape out here. Oh, this stuff is sticky, but that's what you got to have. All right, I'm just cutting a piece off here. All right, so I've got that edge poked through that hole. And I'm going to take my duct tape. I'm going to take it, tape it down. And I've got another hole here. So I'm pushing that one through just a little bit. And I'm going to get another piece of duct tape. And continue. All right, there's another one. All right, I've got one over here. So you just want to push it through just a little bit. I think you're getting the idea of what we're doing. So now I can't reach this hole over here. So I'm going to need a hole somewhere in between. So I can just randomly poke a hole. Put that one there. 
then we've got enough to go over here. We'll put that one in there. And just tape them down. He's come out a little bit, so we're just going to slip him back under there and tape it down. All right, there's my next hole. But if we look up here, we've got plenty of sky. So we might want a hole here. There's 20 of these on this. So we're just going to put them just random places. I want some more over here. I just want to make sure I don't put a hole through his head. So. Alright, let's see what we've got here. Still didn't get one close enough for that. With that light behind it, you can kind of see your outline of your shape. So if you're poking holes from the back, you can see where your snowman is by the, having a light on the other side. want to do these things again like I said random you just but you don't want to poke a hole in the middle of his head and got six there one two three four five six so I still have three that I can use one two three four five six yeah Let's hold this back up and see where we can use these at. So what we're doing, putting our duct tape on there. And I could do one up here. Get another piece of duct tape. What we're doing we're just poking it through there just a little bit and then turning it so you have a little bit of the tip of your little light sticking through okay to get it done here. All right, there we go. Now we've got all those in. And what we're going to do is our, our little battery-operated thing here, I'm just going to kind of 
tape that in. To hold him. So we're just going to put a piece of tape across like that. And if that doesn't hold good, you can always put a staple in there to make sure that he's it's held in there good. So let's flip it over. Now what I'll do in a few minutes is I'm going to take some more tape and tape all this down. But I want to make sure I've got everything where I want it. So there's my lights. Looks like they're sticking through. Doing pretty good. Okay. Now if you want to, you can go back with just a little bit of white paint and where you have a hole right in my brushes over here let me open this up like this okay so where you have a hole at that you don't have any white just paint you a little bit of white over that like that, and then whenever your lights are out, the little light won't be so noticeable. I'm just pushing that one back down in there. He was sticking out just a little too far. You could actually see the bottom of the bulb, or the neck of the bulb. Okay. All right. And I've got just this little place here. I think I'm going to put a little bit more. While you've got this out, if you want to touch anything up, you can go ahead and do that. And I, that looks pretty good to me. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I know that there's a lot to it, but I didn't want you to miss anything. So I hope you're, you've painted right along with me. And I, so thank you for watching. And be sure to join my YouTube channel. And you can see me on my blog, SmokyMountainMaker.com. And that's Smoky is S-M-O-K-Y, MountainMaker.com. And I'd love to have you come and check us out there. We have some more fun projects for you. So have a good day. I'm going to let you go for now. If you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments. And I'll try my best to answer them for you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.